Well, after spending 15 years playing in England, the goalkeeper Brad Jones made a move to pastures new in the Netherlands, and we sent his former club and international teammate Mark Schwarzer for a chat. I think Holland's one of those places that you can come to and everyone's quite laid back. I think the Which suits you. Yeah, this suits me, yeah. <laughs> you look like you're really enjoying your time here. So let's go back to the beginning um, of a remarkable journey. You signed uh, for Middlesbrough back in March 1999. How did that move come about? It was a crazy time. Yeah, as a kid coming from Australia, I didn't really expect too much. I thought it would be a good experience. I'd be watching you know, the likes of Van der Sar, Schmeichel, yourself, and just try to copy. You know, I'd literally go to training and try and copy anything that I saw that I thought, yeah, that works. But yeah, unfortunately at Middlesbrough I always had someone in front of me that kind of... Uh, <laughs> there was a rock that I couldn't get out of the way. In 2010, you were included in the squad for the, the World Cup in, in South Africa. But then you receive the most horrendous news that you could ever receive, I think, as a parent. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a day that never leaves you. You know, I can remember everything about it. We were sat there and I got a phone call. And, yeah, it was Luca's mum. You know, my, yeah, my world had literally crumbled, you know, just from underneath me. You know, the word of leukaemia, cancer, it's... Yeah, it's one of those things, it's, yeah, it's the worst possible thing you can hear. The world gets turned upside down, and then you also have a decision to make about your football career. I was in a hotel in, uh, in the south of France where he was living with his mum. I got a phone call to say there's a chance that Liverpool are interested. And to get that phone call at that sort of stage in, <laughs> in your life was, yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. Luke has put up an incredible fight in November 2011, unfortunately passed away. How do you even put that into words? How do you deal with that? Yeah. I mean, How do you deal with it today still? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, at that time, you know, there was a lot of me that just kind of was going through life. You know, on a professional level, football became just something that I turned up for and, and went home again. I remember watching when you made your first league appearance for Liverpool again after Luca's illness. I wasn't 100% there. I hadn't been on the bench for almost a year. And then there's a short back pass, goes back to Donny, and I'm thinking, you're not going to make it. Donny starts walking off, and you can't get the tracksuit off quick enough. <laughs> you're literally trying to get the zip undone. Yeah, I just thought, right, calm down, breathe, and wait. That moment, Liverpool fans were right behind me. They erupted, and man, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it. But it was just that moment of relief, of sort of realizing I'm back. I was never, at the time, going to be a big enough name to walk in and command Liverpool's number one jersey. Sometimes that dream ends, and you have to move on and you know and look for something new. You played for like the last sort of six months of last season here in, in Holland. There were obviously quite a few clubs that were interested in you. I had options in Holland because the six months at NEC had gone so well. In the meantime, I'd gone back to train with Liverpool. I got a phone call to say Feyenoord are interested. Within two days, I was over here doing a medical and signing, and it's been a fantastic move for me. Can you see yourself staying here long term? I think, first and foremost, like I, I'd like to make up for lost time. You know, this year we've got a massive chance to put Feyenoord back on the on the top of Dutch football. And after that, yeah, we'll have to see. But I think the Premier League's the pinnacle. Like most players, that's where you wanna that's where you wanna be. And in football you never know, so I'll try and make the most of whatever comes. A really interesting interview there with, with Mark Schwartz and, and you know going into the, the depths of where he's come from and the personal experiences he's been through as well. It's interesting that in going to Feyenoord, he's almost going away to try and come back, isn't he? He's planning a, a route back to the Premier League. Yeah, very much so. Um, and listening to him there, he sounds very happy. Because I remember watching him uh, last season when he was at Bradford. You know, and I'm saying to myself, first and foremost, he's too good to be there. And then when it didn't work out, I'm saying to myself, this guy's playing the Premiership. But listening to him there, he's found his mojo again, he's enjoying it, and he, like you said, he's playing for a top team in the Holland in Feyenoord. 
Did you, when you were playing at a peak of your powers, so at Newcastle and Manchester United, did you ever consider a move abroad? Is, it, is this something that you, you look back on and you, you regret not going? No, I, I would never have considered one then because I was playing for Manchester United. We were okay. the strongest team and we were winning everything. <laughs> You've got to say that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, because we were, you know, it was the dominant force and everyone wanted to come to Manchester United. I think if I was playing now, I, I think I'd look at it a lot more open-mindedly. Uh, a lot of players now have the opportunity to move abroad, learn a new language, live a different way. I, I, I think I'd consider it if I was playing now. Do you think it improves, could it improve you as a player? Not necessarily you, but now. You, you would advise a young yeah. player if you get the opportunity to try and do why, it. Why not? If, if, if you're going to play for one of the top teams in Europe, why not? You know, you can only come back to another team in England and be a better person, better player. No, but individual, so I, I'd love to sample it if I was playing now, definitely. Okay, you didn't do too badly, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. That's it for this week. Huge thank you to Andy. Thank you for watching as well. Remember, you can keep up to date with everything this weekend via the BBC Sport website. We've got a bit of Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for you as well. We shall see you again next week for another Football Focus. From all of us, thank you very much.